Welcome to part two of our video as we continue to focus on the role of the Yardmaster at Bucky's Crossing. When we ended part one, the Yardmaster had just finished organizing his car ferry yard. Remember that the arrival departure guide is our best friend. Looking at it, we see that the next train to arrive will be the RJ Turn. The RJ Turn is a local freight from Waverly that switches several towns including Bucky's Crossing. He'll drop off some cars for us and we'll pick up cars going back to Waverly. So it's time for us to pull outbound cars from the local industries. You start with the cars at Blue Star Freight. Remember that the first car is still being loaded or unloaded, so you won't take it. You move the cars so that you only pick up the second car, repositioning the first car back at the loading dock. You recognize that the switching will block the roadway for a few minutes, which town folks are never happy about, but you do your best to pull the cars as quickly as possible. You pull the string of cars that will be picked up by the RJ turn and move them to the ferry access track. You then run your switcher around the cars and position it at the opposite end of the track. This will put you in perfect position to switch the RJ turn when it arrives shortly. In your usual efficient form, you pull the car cards for the three cars being picked up by the RJ turn and set them in the ferry access track box. No sooner had you finished your preparations than the RJ turn arrives at Willow Creek Junction and calls for permission to proceed to Bucky's Crossing. You toggle the permission signal to green and the RJ turn proceeds to Bucky's Crossing. After the RJ turn has left the junction, you toggle the permission signal back to red to ensure that subsequent trains also stop at the junction. RJ turn finally arrives at the west end of Bucky's Crossing. By the way, notice that the superintendent has removed the cars from the ferry as if it has departed. A loaded ferry will return later. You've routed the RJ turn onto the interstation track to facilitate easy switching. As indicated by its name, the RJ turn will turn around here in Bucky's Crossing and proceed back to Waverly once it has completed all assigned switching. Accordingly, the road engine runs around its train to get positioned on the head end for the return trip.
As we've seen before, the road engine repositions the caboose so it can be added to the rear of the train after the switching is done. The road engine then returns to the interstation track to wait for the switching to be completed. It's now time for you to go to work switching the turn. The engineer of the turn gives you the car cards for the train and you see that only two cars are to be set out in Bucky's Crossing. One car for the ferry and one car for Fenster's Produce. Fortunately, both cars are located on the end of the train next to your switcher. Since these cars will be switched to local industries, you decide to put them in the off-spot location you established in the yard on track number three. You'll move them to the industries later. You next pull the cars that you set aside on the ferry access track and couple them onto the end of the RJ turn. According to the AD guide, the turn has a maximum load capacity of eight cars, so there's plenty of horsepower to take these three cars. You've decided to grab the caboose yourself and couple it onto the end of the train. Once the caboose is in position, the RJ turn is ready to return to Waverly. You contact the dispatcher and notify him that the turn is ready for departure. You check your arrival departure guide and see that passenger train number 8 is due to arrive at any minute. Since number 8 is a scheduled train, it takes priority over the RJ turn. So the turn will sit in Bucky's Crossing until number 8 arrives. In the meantime, you move your switcher to the off-spot cars in the yard in preparation to start switching the local industries. Train number 8 contacted you from Willow Creek Junction and you've given it permission to proceed to Bucky's Crossing. You've routed number 8 onto the outer station track next to the passenger station. Since number 8 will sit at the station until 4.34 per the schedule, the dispatcher has cleared the RJ turn for departure to Waverly. Once the dispatcher knows that the turn has cleared Glacier Valley Tower, he knows that number 8 can safely depart Bucky's Crossing on time. Right on schedule, train number 8 departs Bucky's Crossing, headed for Spokane.
It's now time to do your local switching. According to the car cards, the Grand Rapids box car is going to the ferry, and the other three cars are for local industries. You pull the cars out to the yard ladder, and then set out the Grand Rapids box car on track number two, with other cars destined for the ferry. You then rejoin your string of three cars and move them to the inner station track. In order to switch the industries in East Portal, you need to run around your cars so that you're pushing them into the industries. With the runaround completed, you're ready to return to yard track number three, which you'll use to switch the industries. You organize your car cards, putting the one box car into the box for track number two. The other cards show that you have one car for Fensters and two cars for Blue Star Freight. The reefer for Fensters is on the head end of your string, so you set it out first. Next you have a boxcar and another reefer for the freight company. You push the remaining two cars into the siding for Blue Star Freight. And last but not least, you file the car cards into their appropriate boxes. We've got two more trains that we're going to handle in this video. Freights regularly run between Waverly to Bucky's Crossing to bring cars for the ferry. Train number 44 is one such train, and he's just arrived at Willow Creek Junction. At your direction, 44 leaves the junction and heads for Bucky's Crossing with its load of coal hoppers.
You move your switch engine into position, ready for number 44 to arrive. You've routed number 44 onto the interstation track. Number 44 terminates in Bucky's Crossing, with all cars going to the ferry. Your arrival departure guide shows train number 45 returning to Waverly with a load of cars from Bucky's Crossing. So like we've done several times now, you have the road engine run around its train and reposition the caboose to the ferry access track. You now couple on to the coal hoppers and move them to an empty yard track. Then you grab the cars on yard track number one, which are destined for Waverly, and move them to the interstation track to couple on to the available road engine. This will now become train number 45. While you move your switcher out of the way, you also notify the dispatcher that train number 45 is ready to depart Bucky's Crossing. The dispatcher gives the clearance. You've coordinated with the road engineer that he is to pick up his caboose as he departs Bucky's Crossing. He does so, and then heads west to Waverly. It's been a busy day in Bucky's Crossing. All trains that run on the subdivision either terminate in, run through, or turn around in Bucky's Crossing. But while you weren't looking, the superintendent has reloaded the ferry and notified you that it has just arrived at Bucky's Crossing. You're experienced now, so you grab the car cards and begin the task of switching the ferry once again. The Yardmaster's job at Bucky's Crossing is a really fun position. During an operating session, you'll typically handle 12 or 13 trains and switch three ferries. I hope that you've enjoyed your time in Bucky's Crossing. And as always, thank you for visiting the Willow Creek.